Hey everybody, Ronaman here. Thanks for tuning in to Stationeers. So last I left off, we were setting up uh, a little project that uh, I think will come in handy, especially filling our atmospheric um, tanks and also for smelting in general. Now, a question was asked, why am I isolating the furnace from everything else? Uh, after I chew on some fries to think about that, I will answer said question. Uh, so the reason is, the furnace, as well as the arc furnace, uh, both outgas a little bit. Not much. Not really, honestly, worth capturing. But the issue is, whatever it does outgas will be hot uh, and pollutant meaning that you don't want to breathe it in your normal um, base. And also, uh, because it's hot, it will produce uh, a gas that will, or will produce air that will melt the ices in your hand. Um, and I didn't really want ices to randomly melt in my hands, so that is exactly and positively why I uh, am putting the furnace in a different room so that the room I'm standing in will be nice vacuum that won't screw with my ices. And the furnace room will be um, also vacuumed out as well, just to capture whatever gases are in there. Because if we didn't do that, eventually the gases would build up and become somewhat of a problem. Alright, so we have the temperature and pressure. Uh, but of course, we don't have the display for what, uh, how many contents have been processed which will eventually go here. So, I have Logic I.O. to do that for me. Ooh, fancy, right? Uh, Alright, so we need to maybe just have a writer? I'm not exactly sure. I haven't really thought this part out. Uh, I, of course, will need more cables. So, whatever I do, more cables is top priority. So, let's go crank some cables out. And I think... I think I'm going to leave all of this beautiful stuff for the smelting room because, of course, I could start capturing the gases, uh, which I would like to do in order to fill some of my other tanks. Um, so let's see. I don't have the volatiles filter or water filter or N2O filter, uh, so I ought to make those as well. Uh, they will. I'm going to do heavy filters for them because it's economical to do heavy filters in my opinion um, but that means that I'm going to use a lot of my special resources here let me uh, finish that off all right so let's go ahead with the filters okay uh what was I doing whoa come on game thought I was typing all of a sudden all right so we need the nitrous oxide filter actually let's do vol filters first Vol heavy filter is going to require copper, steel, and electrum. How much electrum? Ten? Yeah, this is... Oh, I am not going to have enough electrum for all of this, but that's okay. Uh, copper and steel. Copper I know I can find in here. And my steel I can find in here. Oops, let's keep dumping that out. And the reason I'm making these filters is pretty soon I'm going to be filtering these sort of gases and uh, it would help to, you know, have a filter that allows me to do it. I don't want to take too long over here because I don't want to make more than one. Well, actually, um, ooh, I forget who gave me this tip. Uh, no, I actually remember who gave me this tip. Uh, if you change the recipe, it will only make one. So it will look wrong, but what will happen is it will pop out a uh, volatile filter and then be done. Uh, oh man, this was Ozzy, I think, that, that mentioned this. I didn't write it down, so if memory serves. Uh, and that's a good way to use these auto lathers. So there we go, we have our volatile filter and it stopped making new filters. And actually, I do want a water filter, so I'll use the same trick again. And after a water filter, I don't think we'll have any nitrous oxide um, through the mix here. Keeping the filtration unit on, as long as there's no uh, volatile filters to filter, uh, it doesn't really matter. It's not going to use the the uh, fil filtration filter health or whatever up. Um, 
But the reason I'm having these on is some of the stuff I'm going to be melting will produce volatiles and water and I should start collecting that. Especially, especially water because I'm going to need a lot of water from my hydroponics projects. Um, hell, I could even make a pool. So we're not going to... Hmm. I wonder what actually required in the water filter. Oh, so the remainder of my electrum. Or not the remainder, there's nine left, but... Uh, I'm not going to be able to make Electrum until I get this furnace up. I could, of course, use my old furnace, but I don't want to. I want to use the new one. The new one is fancy. I like the new one. Uh, okay, purple frame, whatever. All right, so let's hook this bad boy up. And this will allow us to read how many reagents have processed. Um, that is important to know so that when you... Uh, what basically what that allows us to know is when to open our manifold uh, or the fold rather uh, because if you open it early um, let's say you're trying to make steel and it hasn't processed all the coal and you open it it's going to get a little screwy all right so the input here is going to be furnace no it's not going to work like that okay uh, what I'll need is a reader as well oh uh, let me make sure my furnace is dated it is indeed dated. Okay. Logic reader. Come on, C. C is, of course, like the auto uh, rotate. Sometimes it's nice, sometimes it's frustrating. All right, so the input here is going to be my furnace. And the variable I'm going to read will be reagents. Turn that on. And then the input here is going to be my logic reader. And the output is going to go to the LED small. And I should all label this as well. And setting. And now to know that this is working, I suppose I could change the color, but I don't really care if it's green or not. It's, as I said, this is a temporary project. Eventually, maybe I'll make a more permanent one that's all nice, nice. Uh, but as far as the temporary one goes, it doesn't need all the bells and whistles and the polish of uh, a perfect system. So if this works correctly, uh, the LED display here should read what the uh, reagents are. So let's go ahead and dump that in. Uh, nothing is going to... Oh, the fold is open. Uh, none of it's being processed because, of course, it doesn't have temperature. So let's actually smelt this. Uh, which means taking off my belt. And switching the belts up. And... Split. Two volatiles off. Full mold is closed. Cool. And then grab one of the oxide. All right. Activate. And there we go. We're starting to get temperature and pressure information. Dump my iron in. And uh, yeah, my LED's upside down. Well, it reads 50 when it is 50, so it works. I just need to, you know, uh, correct the whole upside downness. But there we are, our iron ingots. Uh, so proof of concept works, uh, but partially. I bet a lot of you were like, "Hey, that LED is upside down," and I was just too dense to notice. Uh, so let's go ahead and fix that. Belts off, and swap. That's kind of funny. Uh, so what we're going to need to do is slap a steel frame in there again, so I can move stuff around. Weld said frame again. And fix our little upside down LED. Has that ever happened to you in real life? You're working on a big project? The problem is the zeros are like, not directional. They don't really care. So it's hard to tell that everything was sadly upside down. Oh, come on. Sometimes it uh, bugs out and does not allow you to, uh, to... Pull 
put stuff down. So I can either, I guess I'll go lower rather than higher. Where did that cable I just snipped go? Uh, okay, I'll worry about that later. Uh, can cables intersect shoots? I don't think they can. No, in this case they cannot. Uh, so let's go ahead and figure out how to wire this up that doesn't intersect the chute. Alright, we got rid of... Now that we have that built, we can put that away. Cut the frame out. Oh, I dropped... I'm just fat fingered and everything today. Uh, drop the frames around. Logic Writer doesn't know what to write to anymore because it's not connected to anything. Uh, somewhere in here I have cables that sort of fell. You know what? Eh, that's okay. Uh, a lost cable or two I'm not going to cry over. Okay, how do I get this thing powered on where it doesn't intersect something else? I could go straight down, I guess. Because cable corners aren't going to cut it. Yeah, I'm going to have to go straight down. This gets a little messy. Because it's going to be subterranean. Or at least inside the frame. Uh, actually, I could probably snake it around here. Let's see. No, oh, yep, straight grid. It depends on what the collision... No, that's not going to work either. It depends on what the collision is with the uh, furnace or not. Uh, and obviously I'm getting a lot more collision than I want. So let's go ahead and... Remove the frame. Or parts of the frame, I should say. And then... Now we have easy, easy access. I don't like to put things underground because you can't maintain them if there's a power shortage or whatever. Uh, and then also I... I can't seem to get close enough to uh, interact with that. Really? You're just going to taunt me like this game? You're just like, ha, you're close, but not close enough. Fine. Well, I will have the last laugh. I have big tools that break things. There we go. Oh my goodness, why? All right. Uh, sorry, Mr. Reader. I'm just going to have to break you. All right. So what I will do here instead, now that that reader is gone, is to direct these cables a little bit differently. There we go. All right. So now it's plugged in. I had a... It reminds me of, like, when you're doing car maintenance. Not that I'm really a maintenance guy. But um, doing car maintenance and, like one part is bolted under like 15 other parts so to replace like one stupid little sensor uh you've got to basically fully disassemble just about everything uh that's kind of what it felt like about that all right so mr reader and writer let's set you back up uh but i think this time i'm going to use my labeler uh reagent reader the agent writer. Uh, the batteries in my labeler are very low. Rename that reagents. Uh, maybe reagents LED. Uh, before I do anything else, let's go ahead and smash into my hydroponics. No, uh, replace the small battery. Actually, I'm just going to hot swap it for this one. Because that will power up. Uh, now I have a bunch of fully charged nuclear batteries. That's pretty cool. Uh, I'll leave the battery charger on. They slowly... Um, what is it called? Dissipate over time. Um, it would take hours to fully dissipate, I suspect. But uh, that doesn't mean I, uh, I want it to dissipate. Okay, so now to set these up. Input is going to be La Furnace. Variable of re oh, reagents, done. And the input is the reagent reader, the output is the reagent LED, and the variable is setting. 
done. Cool. Alright, that's all set up. And now that will properly read and it won't be upside down. Nice. Uh, as you can see, the pressure and the temperature is slowly decreasing as it should over time. Uh, the next thing. We need to add remote control mold and activate. Uh, so I'm going to mimic the logic or the uh, inputs for those. So the mold is going to be a um, like a throwing lever switch. And the activate is going to be a button. Uh, Alright, so let's go and make said uh, buttons and switches and all that. So, logic switch is where it's at. Gopper and gold is what we'll need. Run a little low on gold. That's okay. I can just be economical. The reason why I'm not doing any smelting is I would really ideally like to um, put all the smelting into the new furnace so I can capture all the lovely materials that uh, I need. I guess I could throw iron in there. Alright, so logic switches can be used for a lot more purposes than just like buttons and levers, but that's what I'm going to use it for. So here's a switch, a lever, a button, and a dial. Um, you can hook these up with a lot of cool logic. Like for instance, you could have a disco room where a dial controls the color of your lights or something like that. Alright, so let's put the... Uh, lever here for the mold and the activate button there uh, and label them furnace mold lever furnace activate button very very logical uh, it also would be cool if I painted them why? I, I don't know. But, um... Uh, I feel like they should be red. They're red on the furnace. Well, what is the mold? The mold might be yellow? Yeah, the mold is yellow. But the button is red. So now it matches, right? Those levers look the same. And those buttons look the same. So now what I need to do is read the state of the button and the lever with logic and then right to the uh, furnace so that they mimic. Seems, I, I, and I might not be doing this the most efficiently, but you know what, um, that's my MO at this point. So let's go ahead and put these things uh, here. No, I don't really like that. I want them grouped up together. So I'll just put my reader and uh, it appear it, it occurs to me that I'm really not going to use these side frames. So let me just get rid of these side frames. Now that uh, my buttons are there, uh, we can make it a little bit easier to... to oh, yeah. Uh, so some of the stuff drops when it's not connected to cables. Uh, so let me uh, fix that. Pretend I didn't do that. If you'd be so kind as to humor me. Stacking all these sheets together. My red button stayed red. That's cool. My lever is... Alright. Uh, for us not to have these disconnect. Just plugging them into something will have them float. See? Voila! They're floating. Yes. Uh, convenient, for sure. Breaks maybe the laws of physics, but uh, whatever. It allows you to construct a little bit easier. I'm very happy that certain items float like that. Okay, and to plug these in, it's not all that hard because we have a cable hookup right here. Done. Now they're connected to the same network. 
They don't do anything yet. They don't have any logic. They're just switches and buttons like you'd give a child so that the child could be amused and entertained without actually affecting anything. Uh, next up, we need some more cables. And maybe some stairs. If I could spell stair. All right, and we have a individual stack of iron here, so let's throw that in. And I switch the arrow so it only makes one of it. Like that tip. That tip will be really, really handy as providing I remember to use it. I really could use stackers here. I plan on uh, eventually having a stackers on all my crafting equipment and all that so it doesn't just pop out one at a time it stacks it nicely into stacks of like 50 or whatever and maybe even add that to a fabricator so i can fabricate exactly how many i want yes all future projects all yet to be done okay now i have stairs so i can just walk right in it's a little bit more convenient uh next up the reading and writing of said buttons So, a lot of this could be done with IC logic, uh, but it would probably take me longer to work out the logic than just slapping this down. Uh, maybe in the future version I'll have uh, logic, but uh, this version will not. And that's totally fine by me if it's fine by you. Alright, so that's a reader. This should be a writer. Um, then... Um, mold reader. Mold writer. Cool. So all we gotta do here is... Hook this up. Whoa. That was weird. Hook this up so that the input here is the lever oh yeah these fell into mold lever without the big e and uh activate okay cool all right so my mold reader is going to read the mold lever and it's going to read the settings. So right now it's setting zero, setting one, right? And then this mold writer is going to have the input of the mold reader and output to the furnace. And output open. So let's see if I did that right. Put my screwdriver away. Why do I keep sliding down these? Oh, there we go. I was like sliding down the stairs. Well, ah, fell out of the room. So now it should mimic one another. As you can see, a little bit of latency. But if I close the lever, it closes. Lift the lever, it lifts. It's really not magic. It's just logic. <laughs> that should be my catchphrase. Okay, so that part is done. That mimics. And then I can... Um, so at this point, all I need... The only functionality I'm missing on the furnace is this activate button, which is really straightforward. Um, and that will require two more little logic chips. Uh, I'd love to just add to the line here, but I think I'm out of space. So let's do another reader, and I'll put it over here. Because we're kind of running out of space over there. Because of these shoots. Shoot the whoop. Um, there we go. And now, last but certainly not least, I'm going to need more cables, probably. Hooking all these things up to one another. All right. Where's my cable hookup? I can grab from there, I guess. 
Although it'll look a little sloppy, but you know what? As I said, it's temporary. If I wanted it fancy, I'd, uh, I'd, I'd make it fancy. I just, uh, I want this to work. Uh, the eventual, the final version could be fancy. And I think there is demand to see, like, a fancy gas, um, you know, gas, uh, uh regulated furnace or whatever. Alright, so, this is the writer. I might even be able to skip the reader. Input is activate, and the output is furnace activate. Yeah, I don't think I need a reader here. Uh, in fact, that might also be true with the mold over there as well. Uh, I'll try to simple over, uh, ugh, simplify that if I can. If we turn this on, let's see if the activate works as intended. Uh, it's really hard to tell, isn't it? Uh, okay. Well, let's give it something to activate upon. And that way, uh, we'll know. So let's go ahead and split one. So if it works... Oh, you know what? It is too hot. Uh, actually, it also reminds me that the I don't have the ability to control the uh, volume pump flushing or anything uh, while inside. So I might want those controls as well. So I can flush my furnace uh, inside the vacuumed out room. Um... I didn't mean to split half. Oops. I also didn't really mean to split one off like that. Alright. We want to know if it can activate. So. What I need to do is vacuum out that beautiful furnace there. And let's do go ahead and kill this logic reader and hope that it okay furnace temperature okay it's still too hot it takes a while for it to um Normally, I wouldn't have this issue, right? Normally, I would want whatever ices I put in to melt. Uh, but at the moment, I don't. I want to test <laughs> whether the activate works. Uh, so I just have to wait a while. Uh, but what I'll do is I'll do the mold here while I wait. So, the let's turn this off so it doesn't get screwy. Uh... Bold lever will be the input, and furnace open will be the output. And I think that cuts out the logic reader. Yep. Okay, cool. Uh, so what I'm going to do is... Boom. Have this be a writer as well. Mold writer, and this will be activate writer. And I'll just stack them all on one side. Uh, that's not true here because you can't, um, I can't, uh, pull reagents from the furnace without a, a reader. It's just that, um, these switches here only put out one type of data, which is why I can skip the whole reader part. But the furnace, of course, puts out a ton of different data, uh, which then makes it, uh, so that I need a reader and writer. Unless I'm wrong. I could be wrong. So this is the mold writer, and this is the activate writer. And it's becoming daytime, which means I'm going to need to quickly switch belts so that my oxide does not meltificate. 
And it already has. Cool. I like that. Now this is another issue with um with uh basically the you know whole, whole furnace thing is that I want to split the stack. I wish I could drag split. So uh let's see. Activate hmm. Yeah, I'll put my oxide in there. Alright, so now as you can see the contents is sitting in there. I hit the activate button and one gets melted. And that's totally fine. I might not actually want an activate all. But because the furnace is really cold, because those oxides are really cold, as you can see the temperature is really low here, uh, that's why they're not automatically melting. But obviously my activate works. And I get it returned to me. Beautiful. So these functionalities work. Uh, so the last thing is turning the, uh, which means I can totally get rid of this logic writer here. It is not necessary anymore. And all those cables are not necessary, which is great. But, uh, well, I'll probably be putting them back. Because if we want the ability to control the... Um, I think this volume pump, we don't need to control inside. Because we would need to read uh, the temperature and the pressure and all that jazz uh, out here. I don't... Basically, it doesn't really benefit us from controlling inside. But we want this uh, volume pump to be controlled from inside. So let's go ahead and label these appropriately. Um, furnace pump and filter pump. Alright, so the furnace pump and filter pump. Cool. And I'll just leave... Yeah, okay. It is empty, empty? Yeah, it's empty, empty. Turn that off. Uh, so if I want to be able to control that... Uh, I could have a switch. I think a switch makes the most sense because you sort of switch it on and off. So, time to put one of these bad boys back. And we're almost done. And then I probably also want a turn everything on and off switch uh, with power controls. So, two more switches. Because when we're not using it, we can turn it all off, right? So, two more logic switches. And one will be for that uh, furnace pump, and one will be for everything else. When we're not, when it's not in use, we can, oops, I didn't want that. When it's not in use, we can shut everything off. Except for the door. The door has to stay on. Because uh, if the door is off, you can't get inside. Okay, uh, let's label these appropriately again. So, uh, furnace, pump, switch, and power switch. I'm not too worried about the power switch. Uh, the only reason... Well, you know what? Actually, it doesn't need to be a switch. Let's go and do a different way that involves a little less logic. Um, which means I'm going to have this spare switch, but I'm sure I'll find uses for it eventually. Uh, so let's make a console instead. Dude, I just ate some fries. Come on. Um, and then a circuit board for power control. Alright. Eating the leftovers there. So power control basically allows you with a data disk, which... Oh, no, it's in my backpack, sweet. Or my jetpack. 
allows you to basically pick everything hooked up to the console that's on the same data network and control it remotely, uh, which is absolutely awesome. Uh, so let's do a regular console, I guess. Throw power control in there. We're going to need some glass, though. Maybe a really... Oh, actually, this could just go down. Junction. Come on, corner. Alright, let's get... Um, Everything else hooked up first, and then we'll do power control, because we don't necessarily want to set up power control and then add things uh, afterwards that we would just need to reset it up. So, uh, activate writer is on. All right, let's see. Your input is... Activate... You know, I really should call that the activate button. Otherwise, it's going to be really confused. Activate button. Your output is to the furnace. Activate. Cool. All right. Uh, let's see. What do we need to do here? So, this here oh god i am struggling so much on those stupid stairs i don't know why furnace pump switch all right i already labeled that um all right lucky me maybe i can fit everything here uh regardless i'm going to need more cables it's always more cables right Cables are one of those things, you could probably make a few hundred of them, and you'll eventually get through them. Whereas, like, pipes and chutes and things like that are not so much the case. I don't know, maybe you want to go crazy with the pipes. Some people, I've, I've seen people's stationers projects that have, like, giant networks of pipes everywhere, all over the base. Looked really cool, but I couldn't help to think, is this necessary? Just because it's not necessary doesn't mean it's not fun, though. So, maybe I stand corrected. I don't know. But because I don't want to wait forever for all these cables to print out, uh, I will just make as many as I need now. And the reason I put it a little bit lower is I, I think that the, um, the pipe there would interrupt the... Uh this little bit all right and this should be a writer not a reader and the input is going to be furnace pump switch and the output is going to be the volume pump, furnace pump, and setting. Let's see if that works. So right now, the switch is off. Close. Nope, that doesn't seem to work. Let me make sure that I have this furnace pump switch. On. Okay, there we go. And turn this off. And that turns off. One more check. Back on. And it's back on. Alright, easy peasy. Right? Easy peasy. Uh, one more thing I probably am going to want just to be... Just to, you know, make it a little nice is to have lights in here. I haven't really been adding lights anywhere, um, even when I need them. So let's get one more set of lights, and then we can hook up power control. Uh, in fact, I might want more than one light, because... Yeah, I'll do two lights. Uh, because one light 
can cast some pretty hard shadows. So I'll do three. It's a pretty small workspace, and I probably want it pretty well illuminated. Uh, and if it's hooked up to the power control, I can turn it off, you know, on demand. So let's do three lights. And that way, we'll be able to uh, very easily see what we're working with. In a way, this is sort of like a complex chemistry station, right? I mean, not, not lit really, but... I can, I can hope and pretend. Okay, so if I add... Wall lights are one of those things, like, I might have to experiment a little bit. Um, to make sure that it's not too bright or whatever. You know, chicken, uh, not chicken little, um... Uh, Goldilocks. Right. Chicken little something a little different. Sky is falling, right? Uh, okay. Uh, well, this sucks. Because I powered all of that from the top. I'll just turn this light upside down. And in fact... Alright, so the shadows aren't too harsh. This is what I meant by harsh shadows. If you have just one, my damn helmet makes it really hard to see what I'm doing. Where if I have multiples, uh, the helmet's shadow is not so hard because it's coming from multiple angles. It's a very well lit little, uh, little chemistry foundry, I guess, or whatever. Uh, Alright, time for the disassembly and then the power controls. So I haven't done any power controls yet uh, for circuit boards or whatever. Uh, let's see. I will need some glass, which is silicon. And I do realize this episode's running a little long, but I'd like to finish this project or at least get it uh, workable. There's my glass, and I'm going to need my data disk. Alright, finish the console with the glass, slap the data disk in. Oh my god, my light my eyes are gonna burn while doing this. Okay, so toggle. Uh let's see. Do we need anything on when we're not here? I don't think we do. Like if we power everything off, we want everything to go off except for maybe the door. So that we can get back in. And this door might not even be uh, plugged in yet. It is not. Good. Toggle power, everything's off. Oh, but... <laughs> um, issue. Uh, if you put the console itself <laughs> on the toggle, it sort of just shuts itself off and then you can't really get it back on. Uh, minor problems there. So what I need to do here is, uh, to, oh boy, go me. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it reminds me of those, um, those little, uh, joke boxes that, like, close themselves with switches that, like, poke out of the box and turns the box back or closed or off or whatever automatically so that, uh, it's a self-defeating box or whatever. Okay, so, uh, whoa. Hello, console. Yeah, that's a bit of a problem. Where, how, hmm. Oh, I have a lot of cables that I could clean up here. Before I get too sidetracked, let me just do that. I don't like leaving cables everywhere. All messy like. Oh. 
All right, so the problem was the area power controller went off, and then the console forced itself off. So I got to remove some things from this uh, this console uh, so that uh, I don't keep doing that so let's go and fix this not everything needs to be off so area power control stays what come on now you're killing me you're you're simply just killing me yeah, area power control is not controlled by it anymore, and now, um, the console itself should stay on, too. Uh, is that... Okay, yep, the console itself will stay on. So now... All it does is switch states. There it goes. Perfect. Well, I eventually got there. Uh, let's finish off these um, this door here and plug it in. And that means cleaning up the rest of my mess. So... Let's clean said mess up. And then I'll also need a, um, I'll need another act event as well, which I guess I need to add to the uh, power control. And that act event is going to vent in the room I'm in so that it becomes vacuum and therefore during the day won't melt any of my stuff. Uh, so let's go crank one of those out real quick. Gold, iron, copper. All right, before I move the gold, iron, and copper, let me make some more cables. And also one more piece of glass. I probably actually don't need these cables. Thank you, electronics printer. Gold, iron, copper. Didn't mean to close that. All right, uh, act event. It's at the top. Make just one glass sheet. All right. So this act event is. I already have an act event in the furnace room. Uh, this act event is. Um. I think it would be easier if it's on the other side. This act event is going to be the same thing. It's going to basically feed to this pipe here. So I'm going to need some extra pipes as well. Uh, that's okay. And then the glass here is going into the door. Alright, so open that door back up. This door is doesn't need any controls. I'm just going to control it uh, through the console that's built into it. This thing. Because it, it's not an airlock. Uh, it's just, it will constantly venting out. Which means that I also need to, oops, plug this bad boy in. Set this to inward so it sucks all the air out of the room. Um, toggle power is going to need to control that last act event. So let's filter vents. Done. Now, toggle it on, and the vent goes on. Toggle off, vent goes off. Cool. Um, there is, of course, more stuff to be done. Uh, let me just finish it up. Yeah, it's going to be a long episode. I hope you guys don't mind. Uh, we're going to want walls and all sorts of stuff here. Uh, pipes. Wee. 
So we'll go with uh, internal walls. It will look a bit nicer. And I'm not going to have enough to finish it off, but... Alright, so we need like three more pipes, four more pipes, and a bunch of wall kits as well. Alright, so the walls need steel. You can stop flinging pipes everywhere. Thank you. Nothing like a good pipe fight. Let's get this active vent hooked up. Okay, that's ugly. Three way corner. Done. Uh, the spare pipes, for whatever reason, I'm not sure, I've just been leaving here. Alright. Walls. Alright, there was walls. And then, uh, I think we just need glass for the furnace room. So I have all the walls I need. Uh, let's go and finish them off with plastic. I might be almost out of silicon uh, at the end of this. So it's ugly from the outside. Gonna be pretty from the inside. Oh, I'm out of plastic sheets. Yes, yes I am. I'm just going to use up the remainder of my silicon, which means I'm not going to be able to, at the moment, make the glass around the furnace. Uh, that is going to have to come after I smelt some more silicon. Um, but what I can do is a wall or a window between the furnace room and this room. I need basically the... Uh, the control room for the furnace to be airtight. So let's go put a window there. Cool. And we can steal glass from somewhere else because I'm out of silicon entirely so that we can actually airtight this uh, let's go steal some glass. Done. Okay, so... As a result, when we're in here... Oh my god, that is bright. Light off. It might be okay just having those side lights off, I don't know. Um, when we're in here, uh, it should be, yep, as you can see, the temperature here is nil, uh, which means that, uh, despite it being day outside, uh, here's proof of concept, uh, we can very happily have ice is, oh, bye-bye, give that back to me. Okay, something a little wonky is going on here. where my power controller is controlling or being triggered by a lot more than just what it should be. Uh, which is probably an issue with the logic outside. So let's see. Power controls, manual. Linked. Power on. 
Is this still triggering the APC or something? No. It's not triggering the APC. Well, I can troubleshoot this later because this episode is getting quite long. And, um... I can tell you the issue with... It's probably something in the logic. Uh, in fact... Here, let me just do it like this. If this data disk gets pulled out... And I power everything off... Oh, well, that stayed on. Wait, now it works perfectly? Oh, that's cute. Okay, yeah, there's still there's still a little uh, there's uh, let's call it ghost in the machine. Still some bugs to work out, and I'm gonna probably work them out and let you know what was wrong with it. But uh, yeah, it's more or less done. This little um, furnace automator uh, and the net result, the beautiful result of all of this, you know, two episode project is that everything we smelt will be capturing the gases for, uh, which will enable us to fill our volatiles tank and our water tank and our nitrogen and, and pollutant tanks, and we'll be able to use those gases for the base. Uh, if you have any questions, tips, feedbacks, whatever, uh, drop me a line, and I do hope that you tune in next time. Thank you all very much for watching. I'll catch you all later. Adios.